Hello and welcome. My name is Chris Zerbrig, and in this series of tutorials, I will be covering the creation of Qt user interfaces for Maya using Qt Designer. As well, this series will include the process for bringing Qt Designer generated UIs into Maya and implementing additional functionality using PySide 2. If you are not yet familiar with creating Qt dialogues for Maya using Python and PySide 2, I would highly recommend watching my PySide 2 for Maya series. It is assumed that the viewer has a good understanding of common Qt widgets, how to organize these widgets in different layouts, and making connections between signals and slots. So what is Qt Designer? Simply put, it is a tool for designing and building graphical user interfaces with Qt widgets. It is a what you see is what you get editor that allows the user to construct windows or dialogues by dragging and dropping widgets onto a representative grid. These widgets can then be organized into layouts and some signal slot connections can also be made. UIs created in Qt Designer can be loaded inside a Qt application and seamlessly integrated with programmed code to assign behaviors to the UI elements using signals and slots. Once loaded in a program, all of the UI properties can be dynamically edited within the code. On screen, I have Qt Designer opened and the form for Charcoal Editor 2's Preferences dialog is loaded. This is a moderately complex dialog containing a list widget on the left and a stack widget on the right, which creates a dialog that appears to have multiple pages, which can be changed by selecting different items from the list widget. There is a widget on the stack for each item in the list widget, and I can flip through these widgets by using the little left and right arrows that are at the top. Jumping over to Maya, I can show the preferences dialog loaded in Maya and fully functional. For example, selecting an item in the sidebar shows the corresponding widget on the right hand side. And you may also notice that the little arrows I use to switch the pages are no longer here. These are only available in Designer, and they are helpers that let the user change the current page. Now Qt Designer is great for creating and laying out widgets, but it can only take you so far. At some point, you will have to move into code to have any sort of functionality. Looking at the fonts and color pages in the Preferences dialog, things like the color buttons and the sample code text are custom widgets and all of the data displayed is dynamic. There is still a lot of code required to make a UI created in Qt Designer functional. Before wrapping up this video, I would like to discuss a few caveats of working with Qt Designer and the UI files it generates. The first, and probably the most obvious, is that you will need to manage and maintain at least one extra file. This is the .ui file created by Qt Designer. If you are loading the UI file in code, you will need to consider the file path. Is it hard-coded as an absolute path? Is it relative to the Python file loading it? If this is a personal project on a single computer, it may not be that big of a concern. But if you are sharing your tools online, or they are part of a studio pipeline, this is something that will need to be considered. Code maintenance is another consideration. One to two years down the road, if the tool needs to be updated, both the UI and the Python files will likely need to be touched. Again, this is less of a problem if it is a personal project, but in a production pipeline, and if you are not the original author, it can be challenging to find where all the moving parts are and how they interconnect. One final caveat, I know this makes things more difficult personally. 
When loading the UI file in Python, you will lose auto-completion on all of the widgets contained in that UI file. If you forget a widget name, you will need to open Qt Designer to find it. Personally, I don't use Qt Designer very often. I find, in many situations, writing and maintaining the UI in code is as fast or faster than creating it visually and integrating it into the code. That being said, it has its place, and I do use it where I feel it may be appropriate. There are definitely areas where it is a great time saver. 